Hi everyone, welcome to the Triessence Martial Art Channel. So today we're going to be focusing on something known as the method of combat or the approach to combat. Okay, because recently there have been some people who've been asking me just exactly how internal martial art, in particular of the Chinese martial art systems, go, goes about dealing with combat. Right. So I decided I'm going to make a video to clarify different approaches to combat and see which one works better. Not going to take note. Some of them flat out don't work. Others works, but maybe not ideal. But at the end of the day, when two people are fighting, the most determining factor of the result will be this person's ability measured up to the other person's ability. So, method of combat is only part of the equation, but it's not everything, right? A guy can have the best approach to combat, but if he starts coming to the other guy, it's not going to work. Alright, so to start with, we're going to first look at a few methods of approach that don't work. Right? The first approach we're going to be looking at is called I am flash and everybody else is too slow. Okay, one of the most representative of this approach is Aikido. I mean, yeah, just YouTube any Aikido videos and you see what I mean, right? So, but to put it into perspective, it usually roll around somebody's throw a punch, I'm going to grab him, and I'm going to throw him that way, and he's going to trip over. Or I'm going to Grab that punch, he throws another punch, and I'm gonna grab that one, and I'm gonna throw him over. Right? It involves around somebody punching you, you grabbing his hand, and then somehow twisting him around using joint locks, and then throw him over. Now I'm not even gonna get into the other group of Aikido who goes around doing Aki, right? Which is some weird thing where a guy grabs you, you do some key magical stuff, and the guy starts wobbling around. Right? I'm not even gonna go into that. But this is a very you know, to, to actually the more practical side of Aikido, the more physical side of Aikido has this very huge problem that you got to grab somebody, right? And any style that start off by trying to grab somebody, it's not going to work. This approach does not work because a punch is fast and the, and the angle, height, distance, everything can change, right? A guy's not always going to throw a punch exactly at that height. So unless you know exactly how you're going to throw that punch, you're not going to be able to catch it in mid-air. -mid That's impossible. And even if there are people who say they're gonna collide with their arm, find get a few and then grab, chances are when two objects of high velocity collide, they're gonna bounce off. They're not gonna stick. So when you're trying to collide, the guy's not gonna bounce off and you're not gonna catch the punch. So that doesn't work. Another example of this I'm way faster than everybody else are the certain approaches from the Filipino styles, right? Um, so let's look at one of the examples where um, if a guy, so let's say, if a guy throws that punch first, the guy's gonna parry this side. When he throws that punch, the guy's gonna parry this side, rotate this, clamp it here, and then elbow. And then from here, then there are a lot of other things they can do, like controlling this, pull the guy down into an armbar, kneeing, hitting the back of the head, etc. It all, it all works once you get here, okay? But the problem is, let's just look at this with reason and logic. The first parry, sure, it can work. The second one, okay, the parry could work, but this is way too slow, okay? Um, if you look at the actual real speed cross from a semi-decent boxer, it's way faster than that. Even if you can parry it, the punch, the arm is not gonna be there for you to draw around and lock it, right? Nobody punch like this and then wait for you to to do that, they're gonna be punching like that. And the, before you can do the whole thing, the arm is retracted. And even if he, he punched it and I will caught him, it's gonna retract as I'm rotating. Right? It's not gonna stay there for me to, 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 to get a grasp. So this is another example of something that looks very practical and impressive, but if you really put your logic behind it to work out the actual timing of a punch. It does not work. Another similar example would be something like this. So stop, stop with that hand, so he will parry, and then when he punches that one, he will parry like this. And then from here, they will usually punch the rib, and then this arm would control that and hit the, the neck, or from here, they will grab this and elbow, and then all they're gonna be, you know, go from here, punch, and then grab the neck, and then put him in a, in a joint lock underneath, right? So, problem to this, again, the first one is fine, but this 
is very risky, right? You have to 100% be sure he's going to throw across in order to do the hook. This is a quite a delicate move. So what if I'm doing this, but he did the hook in, in a hook in, in there, right? You're going to get hit right in the face. And you don't know he's going to do you know, a, a classic one two or going to be a jab, jab, hook. You don't know that. And if you were to wait for him to launch a punch and then react, the reality is you are not going to be fast enough, right? Um, unless you are fighting someone that's really slow or he really telegraphed his move, then yeah, maybe you can do it. But let's take the general level of reflex, you know, a regular trained person normally has, and the general speed of punches a regularly trained person have, it does not match up, right? Um, by the time he launches that punch, I can't do anything. I have to make sure it's going to be across before I can do this move that already put me in a quite a big disadvantage, okay? And this move itself is quite big as well. It's not just, you know, it's not just a, you know, a parry and a, another parry, right? This is a very small move, so I can afford to start late, check the punch, make sure it's coming, and then do this. But this is quite big, so if I'm waiting for the punch to come out and then try to catch this, it's actually quite hard. Now, the next thing, even if I caught this here successfully, the punch is going to go back. It's not going to stay here. So how on earth am I supposed to grab this and elbow him, or do this and hit him, or do this and then grab him from here? I mean, that doesn't make sense because the army is not going to be there. Right, so normally it could be a punch, it be one, two, and then it's back. So how are you going to make that arm stay there? You can't. So even if this one, by some miracle luck, you succeeded, the follow-up is not going to work. And chances are, he's going to load up with another punch. So, so it will probably end up something like this. You check, you do this, and then it's going to be a punch to your ribs. And because you are here, you can't even see that that punch coming. So you're pretty much in a very bad situation. I mean, sure, you can say, okay, I'm going to preemptively block that. But then what if it's actually a punch to your face? You can't see because you are, you are doing this. Okay? The time it takes you to do one, two, and this, the guy could do one, two, and this. So you have to know that the other person is actually moving. Right? Every time you make a move, he can make a move. So there are no time during this fight that he's going to stand still and wait for you. Which is why when you look at the legitimacy of any approach to combat, you have to put the time in realistically, right? If he's moving and I'm moving, do I have enough time to complete whatever I'm trying to do? Alright, so let's look at another example where the guy will do a jab, so I'll check here, and he'll do a hook, so I'll stop here, and then they will control the arm, hit the neck, grab the arm, do a lock, or, or whatever. Again, the problem to this, this does look more legit, and it feels that way too. However, again, if you really put your logic and time into it, right, this is fine, again, this is also fine, but when I'm trying to hit his head, what happened to that hand? Why is it not hitting my rear? Why is it not doing another hook? Right? Or, why is this hand not fighting back? Or why is this hand not retracting? Why is he not stepping back? There are lots of options he could have rather than doing one, two, and then standing there waiting for you to hit him on the neck. Okay? And even though doing this block and then hit seemed like a very fast motion, it's not faster than a guy doing hook and uppercut, right? Or hook and another hook. And even if you are am in the inside angle, I'm close to his neck, it's not going to stop that. So if you already plan to do two hooks, this is not going to stop that hook from, from hitting my face. Okay, so again, approach like this looks very nice on paper, it looks nice in demos. But if you just get someone who's decent, more or less decent at boxing, and then ask him to unload on you at free wall, you will see how easily these approaches fall apart. All right, now the next approach we're gonna look at is called you watch too much kung fu movie. Okay, the so best example of this is you just Google any Chinese martial arts style two man set. 
All right. Um, I know this is the 21st century and people don't do this as much as they did in the 90s, I would say, or the 80s. But there are still people who are teaching stuff like, you know, you will two people will pose like this, like that, and then he will do a punch, and he will block, and then he will do a punch, and then he will block. You know, stuff like, like, like that, like those two men said, just, just you, you, YouTube Chinese martial art two men said, and you see what I mean, right? Or like, the very Hong Kong movie stuff, like, you know, the guy will do a tiger, right? Like, <laughs> but like if you do, do him. Right, so it's like, yeah, so if I do a punch, and then he will do that, and he will tiger claw me, and I'm gonna do this and do a crime move, that kind of stuff, right? It's basically when you have like, you know, move A counters move B, and then the B guy needs to do move C to counter back that move, right? It's constantly like a chess game. Um, that is also a huge misconception, and it does not work. Okay, simply because the whole idea of something countering something is like you need to have a specific key for every situation. And since there are hundreds, thousands of possibilities, you need to, at the back of your head, have a specific solution for every one of them. And that is not possible for, for, for humans, okay? And also, what the problem with these styles is that often their technique counters one of their own specific moves. So if the guy goes from this style and doesn't attack like that, then that counter move is rendered useless. That's another problem to it, right? So we'll look at another example, which is a typical thing in Wing Chun. Now, Wing Chun is not a very bad style, right? There are capable fighters in it. But Wing Chun suffers a problem like many other Chinese martial arts or traditional styles in general, which is they do too much sparring among themselves to an extent that a lot of the, the techniques and approach are designed to counter their own style, right? And they put so much effort into countering themselves that they're wasting time training things that doesn't work against other people. So we look at a example where we're gonna start from him grabbing here and then doing a punch, like the like wing chun. Yeah. Yeah. So, the wing chun punch. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. And then let's start with the bomb show, right? So for, from this position, then this occasion will look like so I'll step here, puck show here, and then go for the neck. And in this case, the Wing Chun guy will mostly always gonna punch show around. So they preemptively go through here and then entry like that, right? This hand on the elbow, this on the neck. At this point they can hit, they can push, they're in control. Again, it looks like a legit technique, and it probably is if you are fighting against another Wing Chun guy. However, if you just um, look at it again, so, so we know how you get in this position, right? Because this one is specifically used to this position, so let's just start from here. This is sort of fun, but only Wing Chun would actually try to stop the hand like this, which then allow me to see where the elbow is to come through here and get entry, right? What if this guy has his elbow out like this, like, like each one? Then I can't get an injury because the arm is this way, right? Only Wing Chun tucks in the elbow. Well, not only Wing Chun, but only certain styles of Chinese martial arts tuck in the elbow. Other styles don't tuck in the, show, the, the elbow. And if they don't, then I'm gonna get, get, get stuck. And then there are people who gonna, you know, when I'm doing this, they're gonna like to circle it down rather than just tapping, rather than just pushing, right? If you're just pushing, I can do this. But what if the guy circles? Then again, your technique breaks apart. So someone might say that, okay, but in that case, you do another, another technique. However, the problem is for this technique to work, you actually have to preemptively launch the next attack. What that means is, I'll start from here again. So once I'm here, if I wait for him to do the push, then it's too late, because by then he can do a chop to my neck. Okay, it doesn't, it's too late. He, so if I let this arm go past into the line, he can attack me already. So what is hard? The only way this technique works is when he push over and immediately I go over. And to get that timing, I have to be dedicated to doing this almost as soon as he moves. In other words, if he's doing anything other than that, it will not work. And therefore, this will have a high success rate among Wing Chun's own people. But if you go out and find other people, 
it becomes useless, right? Um, so that's one of the big problems with a lot of these Chinese martial approach to combat is that they are so fixated on sparring with one another in their own system that they start developing methods to counter each other. Things that once you take out of the context of fighting among themselves, becomes pointless. So if you look carefully at a lot of these Wing Chun demos, right, that looks very impressive, but if you really slow it down and think about it, you will see how they're able to predict the move before it comes out because Wing Chun only punches like this, right? Wing Chun doesn't have a punch where the elbow is up. So for example, if he just does like three punches, right? So I can stop this punch, I can stop that punch, and on this one I can do the elbow and hit because I know this elbow is going to be here. I can, I can grab the elbow with confidence because that's how the elbow is going to be. But if the elbow is anywhere else, then I can't grab that elbow. It wouldn't have the same effect as the elbow here and me yanking him around. Right? So, so they are so used to people punching like this, the moment somebody is punching this way or like each one or like any other style, this habit falls apart and it doesn't work. And that's quite a big problem. Right? Another thing, for example, um, let's see what we'll find. Right, so, so let's say I'm holding him here and I'm punching him there, right, this is like a typical Wing Chun block. And, you know, the normally the, one of the solutions is to then strike there because it's exposed. And the way Wing Chun works is they would drop the elbow into Tyrant's row to, to prevent that from, from, from happening, right? So, because I know this, so I could almost base that, and as he flips, I'm going to come around and hit him there. But again, this is... Banking on the fact that I know his habit, right? And only a Wing Chun guy would do that. I mean, other people are going to do something else. And if he doesn't do this, you know, the floating elbow part, then this rest of the move is not going to work. I mean, what if when I do that, the guy turns around? Or what if he pushes in? There could be a lot of other possibilities when you're finding something that's not from your own style. Which is why these very Meticulated, specific solutions are actually false and ineffective, even though they may look efficient. All right, now the next thing we're going to look at is from yoga. Okay, so something like so they only punches, but they have a move where they block the kind of carry the punch, and then they come in with a very forceful stance to get into the other guy's space and to pretty much push them off balance and hit them probably on the neck on the sh shoulder something in that line and then in their own system they have a counter for it so so when he does that to me what the left yes and he stick with other leg oh left left and you first block with this hand okay and then yes well, when he does that to me then they do something like this okay um so this works when somebody does that but the problem is you know, not a lot of people are going to deal with a punch like this in a very specific move. And if the guy's not doing this specific move, then this other move is also not useful at, at all. So, this is one of the common problems in a lot of traditional styles, right? Like I've already said, they spend so much time sparring or training among themselves that they derive special things against themselves. And you spend a lot of time pressing these specific counter to a specific move that only themselves do, but when you meet a fire from somewhere else, it becomes completely useless. So the time invested in such moves are not wise. So these are the kind of issues when it comes to some of the traditional styles approach to combat. Well, the whole thing about X counters Y, then Z counters X, like a rock, paper, and scissors game. It sounds cool and works on paper, and you see it in the old Shaw Brothers movies and all that, but it doesn't actually work that well when you fight for real. Alright, next we're going to look at people who think they are Dr. Xavier. What that means is they think they can actually predict the pacing and the outcome of a conflict. All right? um, one of the good examples to this would be Mantis. Now, again, Mantis is not a bad style, but a lot of its combos and applicational techniques are impractical because it's very long and it requires specific re reaction from the opponent. So let's look at one of them. Um, so if you start with a punch on that side, so it will be here, 
double sitting hand, luring the hand out, then from here I'll grab this, pull here, break the elbow, attempt to break the elbow, which you don't actually break, but it's just to make him uncomfortable. From this point, I'm expecting him to bend his elbow, at which point I'm going to circle back in, poke the eye. At this point, I'm going to expect his hand to, to come for the eye, which will allow me to come in, grab here, pick him up, and dunk his head on the ground. Right? On paper, it looks like a perfect solution, it looks like a perfect combo, perfect plan. And if you execute it perfectly, yeah, it works. However, if you really examine it, problems comes up again. So for example, over here, what if when I'm doing that, he didn't tap it like this, right? If you tap like that, I can grab him there. What if he, he pushed further? And then, you know, I can still grab from the top, but the elbow thing certainly isn't going to work. What if he do a circle? Then again, I'm in a different position. So the fact that I can be able to grab his hand here will solely depend on the fact that he's going to tap my hand like mantis people do. Only then will I be able to, to grab it here. And this, again, um, if, he, if he's bad at reflex, then yeah, I can get him to this position. But what if he's good at reflex and he's like an each e practitioner with good structure, he's going to hold here, and I'm not going to be able to, to do anything to it. Okay, then people are going to say, yeah, but then you can poke the eye. But you see, each one doesn't actually fight you with direction. It just holds in structure. So he's not actually going down and allowing me to add to the force. He's going to hold here. So you're not doing this, he's still going to, going to re resist the upwards again, right? So I don't have an opening there. And worse of all, you can step in and give me all the balance. So you can see how, again, it bends on the fact that the opponent does exactly what I expect him to, 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 to do, right? Let's look at it again. So it, I have to tend to be exactly to this block. The hand needs to be willingly, well, at least he needs to be, have less reflex and, let, and no structure for me able to grab him there. And then put him back and allow me to do the, the, the eye problem. Again, here, what if he just steps back? Right? Like, do, do, do a, a jump step back, then not be able to slap him. I had to expect him to block with that hand and not move his feet in order for me to go down and do the grab, right? If he, again, what if he grabs my wrist instead? You see, can't, can't do it. What if, he, uh, what if he jumps back instead of blocking? I can't do it. What if he does? A lot of other things, what if he clenches me and knee me or whatever? There are hundreds of possibilities where this doesn't work and only one possibility where this does work, all right? And that is largely why when you ask these traditional Chinese masters to do a demo application, it's very impressive. But if you ask them to fight, or one of the top students to fight, it becomes a cat fight, right? It either will become a sandal-like fighting, where you can see they train sandal and then they do the boxing punches, or it's going to be a cat fight where they just do, do this. You don't see, you never ever see these well-planned combos when they fight because the situation is too chaotic, right? They can't predict the outcome of what he's going to do next. So any combo like this is bound to fail, okay? Um, you don't predict the future. That's not how things work. The max you can predict is probably a, a jab and a cross or a jab and a hook. That's as much as the prediction you can go, okay? Anything from three moves onwards is subject to massive changes, right? From the second move onwards, any changes will completely throw a combo off the rail. Now, someone might say that, yeah, just do a different combo by then. The problem to that is, you have to first ingrain yourself all the way to the back of your head of this one particular flow of the combo, and then, if there's another situation, you change to another combo. No matter how much time you have to train every single possibility, so that it becomes second nature and at the back of your head that you have to think about anything when you do it. It's gonna to take too long and it's probably humanly impossible, okay? If you look at the martial art or combat style that do work, like let's just say boxing for argument's sake, they have a lot of combos too, but the fundamental strike is just jab, cross, hook, and uppercut. There's not, nothing more, okay? Which is why they're able to build combos that work because the fundamental block is just those, those few. No matter what you do, it's just a variation of those few techniques, which is why when you repeat them over time, you get efficient. And you are able to 
make compost up on the run. But if you look at mantis, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of different techniques to a point where it becomes confusing. You, once you grab the hand, right, let's just give you an example. So, so this is the first entry. Now from here, I can do the elbow thing, right? I can do a, a hook to the head. I can do an elbow there. There's, there's so many things I can do from this point. It becomes even confusing for the practitioner. Then, you know, the people who is going to say they just find one and focus on that. But the problem is, every one of these variations only works for one specific situation. So if you encounter a different situation and you don't know the counter to that specific situation, you are still going to get stuck. Which is why having one specific key for every situation, it does not work. All right? Now next, we're going to look at another more sudden example, right? These kind of approaches are more convincing, right? So, but, if you, but, but again, if you really examine it, there's no problem. So maybe something like, so you're going to throw that punch, I'm going to do like a tiger parry, a, a, a leather core, then he's going to parry down here, and he's going to throw another punch, and I'm going to do that and do a, a classic kung fu uppercut. And then I'm going to step back, he's going to kick, I'm going to block that, and then do a classic Kung Fu punch. Okay, these things are quite popular in, in recent years, right? They're like taking the classic Kung Fu moves that people know from movies and they know and love, and then they add them to a more modern context against people who are doing seemingly modern combat stuff like boxing. And what this does is it gives the people the illusion that, well, you know, this Kung Fu style actually work. Look, he's actually using Kung Fu movement against a guy who's doing boxing movement. The problem to this, again, is that these are all choreographed, right? They're all planned out beforehand. If you ask that guy, master, whatever, to fight against a boxer he doesn't know and be able to do these moves like he showed in the demo, he's not going to be able to, right? That is as simple as that. Because, again, it counts on the fact that he's doing a, a reaction that I'm already expecting. Okay, so he punches, I'm gonna do the tiger crawl, the level punch, again, he needs to be doing this. And he's only doing this because that's what they teach in these certain sudden styles. They, they teach people to, to do blocks like that. So that is why when I do a block, he's gonna do a block like, like that. And from here, he's gonna do a straight punch, and I'm gonna do this. And again, the, when I'm in this p -p position, he has a straight punch, this works, okay? What if you choose to do a hook? Hook, because that's not okay. This is not gonna work, right? If I'm gonna try to take a hook like that, it's gonna end right in my face, right? Think about that, right? So, if he chose to do a hook, this doesn't work, but if my hand's already, let's re 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 rewind that, if my hand's already in this position, there's not much I can do against a hook, because, you know, I can't stop, I, he's already here, right? This movement is bowed up, to a move like that. But a move like that only works against a straight punch. It doesn't work against a hook. At least it doesn't work well, right? The guy's got power, you're not gonna be able to do anything to it. And and I can't, you know, I can't elbow it because I'm not in a good position to, it's too close to my face and my elbow. It's gonna hit my face before my elbow stops it. And if I'm gonna try to come around and stop it, it's too late because my hand is here, right? From the first motion. The first motion sets it up to be here. It sets up this move. But if it's not a straight punch, the move is trying to set up, it doesn't work. Okay, so again, if you take any of these impressive looking applications and you press them down, you realize why it doesn't work and why when these people actually do fight other people that does boxing, Muay Thai, MMA, etc., they're not showing these moves. They're just scrambling for their life, right? This is the reason why. And so it was also why you can't just trust an applicational demo, right? The more impressive an applicational demo is, chances are the more fake it is. So it needs to really keep your what about you when you're looking at martial art application, whether it's Chinese, Japanese, Filipino, Korean, it's all the same, right? All these traditional martial arts have the same problem. Next, we're gonna look at um, a guy who claimed to be teaching Tai Chi application, right? Again, Okay, he's gonna start with that punch. So again, he does like a, a brushing knee motion. Then on the second punch, he does this, which is like, how can you hear me? It's like a pong. And then he claimed that up to this point, the only place he can hit is a rib, which is why he's gonna then do this. Right, do 
continue, then he's going to do this and then push the person out. Now take note, this sort of um, is structured in such a way that it looks very Tai Chi like, right? It's here, it's there, it's there, and then it's a put, even finish with a put. So it's, it's easily going to fool people, misinf well, uninformed people that, wow, well, you know, this is how Tai Chi work in a fight, it makes sense. And it's used against, you know, Western punches, right? Punches, straight punches, and, and uppercut and bo bo body shots. But again, if you really examine it in the same logic we've been using up, up to now, okay, the first one, sure, you can do it. The second one the, is really difficult, okay? I need to be able to catch him in a position where his arm is here to be able to, to, to do that. If I catch it any other way, I'm not able to stop the punch. If it's, if, if it's in a sort of bad angle, it's going to still clip me, okay? So that's already not that easy to, to pull off. And you also have to remember the time it takes for a punch at, at, this, at this distance to reach my face is actually very fast. It's not like this distance where he throws a, a, a hook or I mean, a cross or a jab from a distance, right? Yeah. It's different when I'm already here. So this is quite a risky move, okay? I need to be sure he's doing a straight punch because I always need to learn the second move without waiting for him to punch first. If he punch first, I will not have the time to react. So this, is, this again has to happen preemptively, one, two. But what if you wait half a second? My hand is here without any punch me afterwards. Or what if it's a hook? Or what if it was anything else? It's gonna fall apart. And let's say he did the industry punch, and I caught him there. What if he stepped back? What, what if at this point he decided to, to, to do a a low kick, what if he did anything else other than punching my rear, which is not the only option he has. And I'm going to spend a lot of time doing this one, two, three draw, and then end up not following my plan. And then your whole thing is going to fall apart. So, anything that is defensively combo based, it doesn't work because you can't predict what kind of punches your opponent are going to do. And for any defensive combo based, well, combo based defense to work, is you have to be very precise on what to expect. All right? Again, this is different to modern combat sports, because if you look at boxing, they don't have these funny wonky blocks, right? They have these basic maneuvers to, to get away from the punch, and if all fails, they huddle up and, and, and block the punch with their arms. The reason they do that is because this is just much easier on the reflex, okay? Um, especially at a close round for a split second, there's no time for you to look at his punch and make sure that whether it's a straight punch, a hook, an uppercut, an eye poke, and whatever it is, and then from back over here, pick up the right counter to, to counter him and put him in a bad position, right? That is extremely hard. It doesn't work unless well, unless you have premonition and you can foretell the future and know what he's about to do before he even do it. Okay, so that's another example of some of the traditional approach that doesn't work.